Well, our scripture reading is Romans 8, verse 12 to 17. But did anyone uh, realize what today is, instead, uh, you know, aside from potluck and all that? What is today? Memorial Day. Is it Memorial Day today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Today is actually Trinity Day. Today is Trinity Day. And so <clears throat> a month ago when I looked at the uh, scripture passage and I said, wow, how am I going to address the Trinity in this passage? It's it's actually pretty tough. But then again, at least in this passage, verse 12 to 17, it addresses the Spirit in verse 13. By, if by the Spirit, you are putting to death the deeds of the body. If you are led by the Spirit, in verse 14, these are the sons of God, right? And then you have, in the verse 15, you have not received the Spirit but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, which we cry out, Abba, Father. So the Father is addressed. It is tied to God. And then in verse 17, if children, we are heirs and fellow heirs with Christ. So in this passage, the spirit, God the Father, and Christ was addressed. But how do you explain the Trinity? So I looked at it and I'm saying, wow, I'm, this is a big problem for me, trying to explain it by words. And so what I did is I'm going to need some gadgets for this in order to explain so that you, all of us, hopefully can understand so yeah, you're probably wondering, what is this, you know? Well, I, I brought a gadget with me, which I will be using. And uh, let me test the... Uh... Actually, uh, <coughs> what I didn't realize is we do have an uh, audience in Zoom. So I'm going to test the level on this one first before we... we uh, we start. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see how, how it turns out and then tell me if it's up, heads up or thumb, thumbs down. Okay, so uh, here we go. Okay, how did that turn out? Thumbs up? Yes. Okay, I'm done. We're good. Well, you know, music is powerful. Music is powerful, it can move you. And uh, back in the 1400s, some, sometime around 1469 or something, a theologian named Ignatius Loyola was given the similar task. He was tasked to explain the Trinity. And so what he did is he employed music to explain the Trinity. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing the sermon today. <laughs> but what it is is in music, you do have this thing called triad. Triad. The triad is a musical tone. It's called triad. And actually, if you, if you look at this fretboard here, there are triads that you can play from here all the way to this end. Triads. And if you can master all the triads 
here in this fretboard, you're going to be a guitar hero. Because triads are, I, uh, there was one jazz player who, who said, who, who wrote that triads are the building block of tonal music. Basically her own words was, triads are the DNA of tonal music. But today, uh, what I'm going to use is just one triad, which is called G major triad. And it's here in this uh, section of the, the, the fretboard. You're probably wondering why I chose G major triad. Well, because the name is G, and it's a triad. So I think it makes sense, right? G major triad. You know, the thing with this triad, it's interesting, because I'm going to play it right now. Did you hear that musical tone? It's, it's a tone, it's A, musical, remember? Singular. It's A, musical tone, but in it, there are also three musical tones. You have the, you hear that? That is A musical tone, one tone. You all, that's called the G note. You also have, that is called the B note. It's one tone. And then you also have, the D note, which is one tone. So you have one plus one plus one equals one tone. One, D, G, B, right? Three tones that you heard. Yet, when they all join together, you have one harmonic tone. Trinity. One tone. Three notes. So, here's a question. I have this B note. I have the G note, and I have the D note. Which of these three is the best? Which one is good? Which one is better? Which one is best? Okay, take a guess. Which one? They're all the same. They're equal. There's no one greater. Is that better than... See, the triad, it's interesting because you can hear the notes interpenetrating each other. Yet, it's one tone. You see how, what it is? We're G, B, D, and then you play it. Wow, they are interpenetrating each other. And it's one harmonic tone. One plus one plus one equals one. Trinity, the triad in music. The triad. Now, here's another question. You hear this sound? And this is B. And this is G. Do you notice a difference? Is there a difference? What about D? And B. There is a difference between the three. 
And when you combine all of them, you can still kind of hear that they're blended together of some sort, they're interplay into one triad. Amazing, right? Now, I'm going to do another one. I will pick three notes out of here and play them at the same time. All right? And tell me what you think. Three notes. I'll play them at the same time. Uh, did it sound good? It's three notes played at the same time. Play it again. See? The reason why it doesn't sound good is I just played three separate notes at the same time. But what I played was not a musical triad. This is a musical triad. This is not. So now you can equate to the father, to the son, to the Holy Spirit. But notice too, when I hit this triad, you can sort of hear a dominant note. I'm going to hit G. kind of stays. That's why it's a G triad. So you can see there's a dominant note. The G. And then if you listen further, you can actually hear the B as well, like a supporting note. I mean, like a supporting note. But then you hear the D, it's just like in the background. It's just like in the background. See? Now I can play the B and the G, it's okay, without the D, but with the D, it becomes full. See why it's inseparable? The triad. This is the God of the Bible. They're all equal, right? Yet, when they play together, it will come out that one is more dominant, and then the other is kind of a supporter, and then the other one is just like on the background. And that's biblical, because if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24 to 28, Paul kind of describes this. He kind of describes that order, there's an order of dominance, not like one is better than the other, no. It, in, in the role, in the triad, the role in the triad is like there's an order of dominance that will make the triad a triad. So in a triad, one has to be a dominant sound followed by a supporting sound, and then there's the one in the background that makes it whole. It's just like a bass, I wish Ron was here. You know, a bass player in a band, you will like, he's just in the background, but then it makes the sound full. So you have the father, dominant, then the Son is always supporting, and then the Holy Spirit is right in the background, making it full. But here, if we go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 24 to 28, here Paul was describing Jesus Christ um, establishing a kingdom. And then, when we get to verse 24, it says here, after that, the end will come, and then he will turn the kingdom over to God, the Father. See that? 
Jesus is going to turn over the kingdom to God the Father, having destroyed every ruler and authority and power. For Christ must reign until he humbles all his enemies beneath his feet. Verse 26, and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Verse 27, for the scriptures say, God has put all things under his authority. So what is this saying? God, who is that God? It's God the Father. God the Father has put all things under His authority. Who is this His? Jesus Christ. So God the Father has put all things under Jesus Christ's authority. And then there's a parenthesis. Of course, when it says all things are under His authority, that does not include God Himself, who gave Christ the authority. See, God the Father gave Christ the authority, but of course, the one who says all are under his authority, it does not include God himself. And then in verse 28, it says, then when all things are under his authority, the Son will put himself under God's authority, so that God, who gave his Son authority over all things, will be utterly supreme over everything, everywhere. The dominant note in a triad. See? In a triad, there is an order of role. Didn't Jesus Christ say that when we pray, who do we pray to? Jesus said, when you pray, you answer my name. Isn't that what? No. He said, our Father, who art in heaven. <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> what next? Hallowed be your name. The Father needs to be hallowed, respected, revered. See the triad? Again, in 1 Corinthians verse 11, I mean, chapter 11, verse 3. It says here that, But I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man, and the man is the head of the woman, <clears throat> and God is the head of Christ. God is the head of Christ. So you see the, the dominance there, even though they're all equal. What about the... Son, what's his relation to the Father? We go in John 8, verse 28 to 29. John 8, verse 28 to 29. Jesus said, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He. I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak the things as the Father taught me. Here Jesus is saying, I cannot do anything except what the Father taught me. Do we see the, the order of things? Here you have the Father who is the dominant note, so to speak, and then you have the Son who is supporting the Father. I do nothing on my own Initiative, but I speak the things as the Father taught me. And he who, is sent, who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, verse 29, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. Again, we go to John chapter 6, verse 38 to 40. This is Jesus talking. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that all that he gave me, I will lose nothing. For this is the will of my Father. See, thank you. Thanks, brother. This is the will of my, see, you can see the flow. You have the Father, and then you have the Son supporting the Father. What about the Holy Spirit? The 
The Holy Spirit. If you go to Philippians 2, verse 5 to 8, if you remember that one, what happened is what? Jesus, in his Godhead, let's go to verse 5. You must have the same attitude that Jesus Christ had, though he was God. See? Here it plainly says, Jesus was God. You know, there are, sadly, people today that claim to be Christians, but they don't even admit that Jesus is God. Here it's plainly, plainly saying, you must have the same attitude, the attitude as Christ, though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to, Instead, he gave up his divine privileges and became fully human. Became fully human. So when Jesus was, when we celebrated Christmas, when he was born, he became fully human. But he was also fully God. How? Well, if we go to Luke, verse, uh, chapter 4, in verse 1, it says, Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. As a human being, a fully human being, he was fully God because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, and he was God in human flesh, 100%, but he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, he would have struggled because, you know, everything he did, he was tempted by the devil, but the Holy Spirit was with him. So what happened is, here's the son who was in the order, it's supposed to be as far as authority and role, it's supposed to be the Father, the Son, and then the Holy Spirit. But when Jesus was here, he said, I'm going to relinquish all of that. And I'm going to be a full human being. But guess who he is under? The Holy Spirit. Jesus did not say, Oh, man, I'm the second in command. Now I'm going to be fully human. Now the Holy Spirit, I'm going to answer to the Spirit. Do you see that kind of grudges? No. He said, yes. You know, I'll be under the Holy Spirit. Empower me. I need you. You see the relationship between the triad? There's no animosity. There's no animosity. And while Jesus was here, you, Acts 10, verse 38, Acts 10, verse 38. Here was Peter when he was giving a sermon. He said, and you know that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power. The Holy Spirit and with power. While he was here, before he was crucified, he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit empowering him. Fully God that became fully human. Without all the power. Remember in, in, in Philippians? He gave that up temporarily. So where did he get his power? The Holy Spirit. Anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went around doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. God was with him? I mean, Jesus is God. Why can't he heal by himself? Because at that time, remember, he gave up his power. And who is empowering him now? The Holy Spirit. All the healings that he did while he was here, empowered by the Holy Spirit. 
And then he died, right? And then he rose from the dead. And so in Acts chapter 2, in Acts chapter 2, verse 33, Jesus now dies and rises from the dead. And so verse 33, it says, Now that he's exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven, and God's right hand, so he's back to the order of things. And the Father, as he promised, gave who? Him. Who is the Him? Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit to pour out upon us. So the Father gives the Son the Holy Spirit. So he's back to his order in the triad. See, there's an order in the triad. So now the Spirit is back to D. He's just in the background. He's in the background. Again, we go to John verse 16. John verse 16, verse 12 to 15. This is Jesus say, talking. He said, there's so much more that I can tell you, but you can't bear it now. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Because the Holy Spirit is powerful, he's just going to do his way. Is that what he said here? When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will not speak his own. He will tell you what he has heard. Verse 14, he will bring me glory. He will bring Jesus glory by telling you whatever he receives of me. See that? This is Jesus saying, the Holy Spirit will not do anything but except to give the Son glory, whatever he receives from me. Verse 15, all that belongs to the Father is mine. Wow, here's the dominant one. Now, me, like carnal me, if I'm the dominant one, I'm not going to give everything to the son. Hey, I'm the do dominant one. But the father, what does he do? He, spend most, he spends most of his time showing off the son. The dominant one. That should give us a lesson as fathers or as leaders. See, in an organization, it will not work unless it's working like the triad. There is going to have to be in a role, as, as far as the role is concerned, there has to be a dominant one. It's like See, a, a lot of times uh, when we talk about the Trinity, we say immediately, oh, it's, it's so hard to explain. But in reality, it's here. God created. I mean, God wants us to know him. So why would we make the Trinity so complicated? You know, even if when you're doing a building construction, see, you have the architect, which is the designer, he conceives the design. He thinks about it. He is the originator of this building, the design. And then here comes the engineer. You know, does all the, the, the specifications. The second in command, so to speak, in, in the order of things. But who makes it happen? The craftsman. You have the craftsman that makes it happen. You cannot build a building if everyone is an architect. They're all busy designing. After a year from now, they're still designing. You don't have an engineer, you know, getting all the uh, 
specifications. And then you have the engineer and the, and the architect. Okay, well, I'm, I'm designing. Now, okay, I'm getting all the materials. Five years from now, there's no building. Why? You don't have a craftsman. You don't have, in that organization, you don't have a triad. You don't have a triad. See? The God that we worship is Trinity. It's a triad. It's not this. It's not three notes playing at the same time. It is a triad wherein there is organization. There is order. It's an order of giving. You see? You have the Father who is dominant. Didn't we read it? He's supreme above all, right? But what is he, what is he doing? He's so busy showing off the Son. Look at my Son. Or uh, worship Him. Honor Him. That's what He's doing as the dominant one. And then the Son, who is getting all the spotlight, what is He doing? I'm not going to do anything except what my Father wants me to do. He doesn't say, wow, I got the spotlight. Look at me. Yeah, I'm going to rock out. No. Do you see how the Trinity, the triad, is just busy focusing on the other? And then you have the Holy Spirit is just content on the background, completing completing the union. You know, you don't see the Holy Spirit saying, you know, I'm, I'm on the bottom of the pecking order here. Poor me, there's no spotlight. I better complain, I better file my you know, union grievances here. No. He is built that way, content staying in the background, emitting the fruit of the Spirit. What is the fruit of the Spirit? He's there in the background, joyfully doing things, lovingly supporting, gently in the background, not in the spotlight, gently, kindly. And it makes the triad complete. See? Here is just the Father and Son. But here's Father, Son, and Spirit. Full. Father, Son, and Spirit. So, you know, today, there are people who worship just three gods. There are people who worship Many gods. Many gods. There's this god, there's that god, there's this god, and actually there's more. This is what they're worshiping. This is the tune that they're dancing to. You want to dance to that tune? If you're worshiping all these gods. Okay, let's dance. And some are just worshiping one person god. Yeah, it's okay. But what tune could you rather dance to? See? Could you would you rather sing or dance to that God? Or would you rather sing to this God? Amazing. See? Amen or amazing. But what about amazing grace? House. See how harmonic it is. If you're worshiping the triad, your life is in harmony. I wish, I hope I was able to explain it simpler than that. You know, it's hard to explain just by words. You have to hear it. You know? See this note. I mean D, this D note. 
Did you hear that? I think we all heard it at the same time, right? So this D note is, in this context, is omnipresent. What about this note? Did we all hear it at the same time? This note is omnipresent. What about this note? It's omnipresent. All three, Father, Son, and Spirit, they're all omnipresent, co-equal. What about this? Did we all hear it at the same time? God is omnipresent. See how the triad is? It's one God in three persons. One God in three persons. Our God, the God that we worship, is singular in nature, but it's plural and harmonic and organized in person. See, that's how you explain the Trinity. The God that we worship is one in person, but it is harmonic, organized, socially. It's social in person. Why? Because it's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To the ones who are worshiping one person God, just think about it. You have this one person God. That means there was a point in time when he was by himself, right? Guess who he's loving? Himself. Do we, know, do we have a name for that kind of person? A narcissist, I think, or a despot. So that means if you're worshiping the one person God, at one point, he was a narcissist. And then he needed to create someone to love so that we will, he would be exercising the love that we understand today. But what if eternally you have a triad already? And within that triad, love exists forever. Love exists forever. So, Paul, to, to, to kind of finish this up, because it's already, wow, I mean, time flew. Paul expresses this more clearly when he says, when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray from his glorious unlimited resources that he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. See, you have the Father and the Spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts. See, when you're empowered with the Spirit, Christ will be in your hearts as you trust him. And so... The God that we worship is like a musical triad. Each note sing the same song. Yet each note also plays a different part. And the three together contribute to a richness and texture that no one note alone could accomplish. This is the God that we worship.